In this video, I want to cover debugging Sencha EXDJS app with VS Code. I'll start by installing the Chrome Debugger plugin, then move along to the Sencha plugin. I'll import the app that I created in the previous video. After that, I'll start up Sencha App Watch so it'll run the local server and compile on modifications. And then I'll launch the debugging process that connects Chrome to the IDE so I can set breakpoints. And then I'll display or show how to set a breakpoint. So to get going, let's start by installing the plugins. So I want the Chrome debugger first, and I'll search for Chrome debugger, and it's a Microsoft plugin. So I'll install that. Once it's installed, I'll go to the Sencha plugin. And it takes a moment, so I'm going to reload it before I install the Sencha plugin. So now that it's back up, I'll search for Sencha, and we'll install this plugin. So I've already walked through the initialization process of this plugin, which basically you give it your email and you can set up a trial. And I won't talk about those steps. And you can see that it popped down and says, hey, I got 23 days and I've been playing around with the plugin already. OK, so to get the next step is I want to open my previously created app. So I'm going to open my ext.js app and port it into the IDE. Okay, so now that I have it open, let's start the debugging process. So the first step is to run AppWatch, the Sencha AppWatch. So I'll right click on it and go down to the menu, run Sencha AppWatch. This will start up the local web server and compile the app. And every time I make a modification, it will compile the app again into the dev directory. So now that it's running, you can go down to the very bottom and actually stop it, but I'm not going to do that because once I've got it going, the next step is to start the debugging process for Chrome. So to do that, I'm going to start the remote debugger, um, start Chrome in the remote debugging process, which I go to the, the terminal, so I'll clear what I just did previously, and then I'll up arrow because I've already copied the command from the guide, and the, the link to the guide will be down below. Yeah, just check for that and I'll show how to start Chrome with remote debugging and the port specified. Okay, so I'm going to open up Chrome. Okay, so Chrome is now ready for debugging. This will allow me to use breakpoints and I'll show that in a moment. So now that I have it going, let's start the, the Chrome debugging process and I'll go to the debug icon. The first time I have to do it, I have to actually add the configuration. So I'm going to add Chrome. So it, it, add, it asks for more properties, and I don't need to give it any more at this time. So let's just check which port it's running on. I have to actually specify the port. So it is localhost, looks like 50434. Typically, it's 1841, but I think I have a latent process running. So we'll add 5434. This is a good example to show. Here's our here's my server port. It started on 50,434. Now that I have the configuration, I'll save it. And then we'll start it by hitting the run at the top left. We'll start the debugging process. OK, so if I want to stop the debugging process, I can go to the top middle and click on stop or reload. So it should load up Chrome in the background, and it loaded the app on port 50,434. 50, so let's say I wanted to do a breakpoint on click. Let's find the main view controller by going to the file manager, the app source, and the main controller. There's an on confirm with a function. And let's say I want to add a breakpoint here. Let's just set a breakpoint, go back to the browser, and do a new click and click yes. And there we have it, a breakpoint. So if we want to inspect the variables, I'll hit the debugging view. Here's the global variables, and up at the top will be the local variables and different scopes. OK, so this concludes setting up debugging for XJS app on VS Code. Follow me for more tips and tricks, and I'll catch you later.